Coming up from Sun and Fun in Lakeland, Florida, strap in for a ride into history. And hang on for a formation aerobatic ride, something new from Piper. And we're seeing double. AOPA Live this week begins in just a moment. Purchasing your own aircraft is an exciting experience. AOPA Finance simplifies the process, saving you money with lower interest rates and hassle-free loans, so you get into your new aircraft sooner. AOPA Finance, the right approach to buying an aircraft. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Rudinger. Welcome to Sun and Fun, the Blue Angels, famed C-47, that's all brother, a twin Mustang or two, kit built classics, next-gen avionics. Hey, it's April, it must be Sun and Fun. The show is off to a great start, kicking off the 2019 flying season. Check out the AOPA campus where your favorite yellow bird oversees the exhibit tent. The program pavilion is packed with good, great content. The You Can Fly group welcomes new flyers. And of course, everyone comes by to see our Sweeps Super Cub for the first time on its Whip Air amphibious floats. And of course, there's big industry news too. Is it possible to build a less expensive certificated aircraft? Well, Piper's found a way. And it's an airplane aimed right at smaller flight schools. Whilst we've had a lot of success selling the Archer TX equipped with the Garmin G1000NXI to the professional flight schools that are really feeding the airlines, we were still talking to other flight schools lower down, sort of the, not just the mom and pop shops, but smaller local flight schools. And they frankly couldn't afford to buy new airplanes. The demand for, for new pilots continues to get larger. It's not shrinking. So we needed to get a suitable, glass cockpit flight training aircraft into those uh, flight schools. And so the Piper Pilot 100 for VFR and 100i. The i is about 23% cheaper than the Archer TX. Both have fuel injected Continental IO370 Prime engines instead of the traditional Lycomings. Piper found a number of ways to cut the cost. We've uh, eliminated some features. We've looked at our production manufacturing techniques to the point where um, the, a lot of the plastic parts, we're going to start printing those using a 3D additive manufacturing printing machine. A newly certificated Garmin G3X Touch instead of a G1000 also brings down the cost. No back windows and fewer seats are other cost reductions. Hyper Pilot 100 is actually the next uh, evolution of the PA28, which is a well-known and it's been around since the early 60s, uh, durable flight training aircraft. So it's going to be great news for a lot of the mid-sized flight schools to have an option for a new airplane that uh, is a little more affordable. It's been a long time since we've had that option, at least with certified. It, it, it has, and so we'll see where it goes. I'm hopeful because they're controlling the number of uh, ones they're going <laughs> to produce that uh, they'll be able to sell all the ones they can build. Good. Stay tuned. Great, great news. And more big news from Piper, a big order. In fact, the largest order ever in the company's history, 240 aircraft to L3 Technologies Commercial Training Solutions. Right now, what we're looking at, um, at least from most of the studies, and not just independent studies, and also if you look at the Boeing study, you're looking at about 635,000 pilots that are going to be uh, needed over the next 10 years, and especially when you start looking at, I'm sorry, over 20 years. It's, it's, a, pretty, it's a pretty bleak picture, um, because we are definitely not replacing enough pilots uh, at this time in order to meet that demand. So um, the, the options are one of two, is to uh, change, do something else or we got to start making more pilots. And that's why L3 needs all of those new Pipers. The first part of the order includes seven Seminole Twins and 19 Archer TX singles. And Tom, the pilot shortage is very real. It, it really is and it's great to see them building these airplanes and, and they've got a global footprint at L3 so it's nice to see these American-made airplanes heading all over the world. It's very impressive. <laughs> AirCam announced a new version of its distinctive twin kit airplane. The AirCam was originally designed for a National Geographic photography expedition. The new Gen 3 version adds more capability including a third seat and higher gross weight. It is possible thanks to an upgrade to the Rotax engines. So people have been asking for a third row option, a third seat option for some time now. It's really the advent of this big bore kit uh, that has made this possible for us. Uh, we've been watching the development of that kit for several years. It bumps the 912 ULS and IS from 100 to 115 horsepower. 
The Gen 3 AirCam also has several structural improvements to support the extra weight. AirCam says the new kits will be available in a few months. Gen 3 kits cost $70,000, about $5,000 more than the standard kits. Textron Aviation adds some upgrades to Cessna Singles to show off as well. With nearly every category of aircraft model on display, Textron Aviation presented one of its largest displays ever at Sun and Fun. Many of the upgrades are new avionics packages with the latest and greatest from Garmin. But particularly notable is the optional electric Kelly Aerospace air conditioning system that can be started from outside the airplane by line personnel. Plug in a GPU, push the button, and your cabin can be cool by the time you climb in. So, a cool new feature. Very funny time. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. I'm here all week. <laughs> and we have something new for you, too, and we think you're going to have some fun with it. It's Pilot Passport, a new feature in the AOPA app. You can search for new places to fly and check in at airports and aviation events. I think it's a neat aspect uh, to start checking in different airports around the country, uh, especially someone new. I'm just a private pilot right now, but especially as I start to um, do my journey through the instrument rating, I can start choosing airports and trying to check as many off as possible. Really cool that uh, all their pilots can interact with each other. You can share pictures and comments, and you can earn points and badges for bragging rights and prizes. Just download the AOPA app for Android or iOS and start exploring and sharing. And speaking of flying to fun destinations, AOPA You Can Fly Ambassador Jamie Beckett and Aviation Event Specialist Eric Webb had a lot of fun flying the Sweepstakes Super Cub on the short hop from Winter Haven over here to Sun and Fun. No prop. Off we go. actually have a perfect morning. It's, it's relatively calm winds, just enough to see the surface of the water. We've got a really stable air mass, good visibility, everything's fantastic. Yeah. This might be the best flying into sun in front I've ever had. You want to try a water landing? Yeah, let's do it. Well, flying this airplane is a real treat. I really love this airplane. Of all the sweepstakes airplanes AOPA has ever had, this is the one I want. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't win it unless I quit. I was going to say we should just quit and put our name in for it. Uh, touch and go. And hey, if you missed the sweepstakes airplane at Sun and Fun, you can catch it at its last public appearance at the Frederick Fly-In on May 10th and 11th. We'll be announcing the winner shortly thereafter. But before we give it away, there's just a little bit more we need to do, like a fresh annual. And one other change, as project manager Alyssa Cobb explains. We're gonna be putting a new propeller on it. We've been flying actually with a loaner all this time. So we're putting a, a brand new Macaulay seaplane prop on it at the end of April. And that's the, the last modification to go before we give it away to the lucky winner. The best part about this airplane is just, honestly, the adventures you can have in it. I don't think you can have a bad flight in this airplane. Whether you're just going for a, a short hop, you want to fly low over the, um, the land and look at it, follow a river. Um, if you're flying in the mountains, if you want to, you know, land on water while it's on the floats or in the wintertime with skis, it's just, if you get to go up in a Super Cub any day, it's going to be a good day. So Warren asked Alyssa, would she trade her 170 for the Super Cub? Uh-huh. Uh, she said she'd keep both. Oh, she's, she's a smart wait. lady. Yeah, okay, that's right, <laughs> but she's got a great 170. That would be a hard choice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And so one of the airplanes that's gotten a lot of attention is a rare P-40 with dual controls. AOPA Live's Josh Cochran has the story about one of the pilots who spends his days giving rides in this historic airplane. 27-year-old Matt Kropp is living his dream flying this P-40 called American Dream for Warbird Adventures. Matt takes passengers for rides and gives flight instruction in the airplane. Since I was a little kid, it's been a dream to fly a, you know, single-engine fighter and like I said, the opportunity came up and I just couldn't believe it. It's still very overwhelming, still a new experience for me, but I'm enjoying uh, every second of it. 
Matt was mentored by Tom Richard, the owner of Warbird Adventures. We have a lot of uh, volunteers that show up at the hangar and uh, they, you know, they start sweeping the floors and they start wiping down airplanes and eventually start working on airplanes and they start taking lessons and, and we bring them up. I can't tell you how many have come through the hangar, but it's a, it's a fair few. And uh, you know, it's, we gotta pass this on and we gotta keep World War II aviation alive. And Matt is also passionate about sharing his love of flying with others. It's awesome because for most people, and even myself, it's, it's kind of a once in a life opportunity, a, a dream come true. Matt has flown a variety of airplanes. He spends most of his time flying something much different than a P-40. I'm a corporate pilot out of the New York area flying uh, the Gulfstream 550. So how does a P-40 compare to a Gulfstream? Nothing compares to this. And Matt encourages others who dream of having a career like his to go for it. Shake as many hands as possible. Don't be afraid to get dirty and volunteer because I literally started off as a volunteer at this facility. Did not know anybody there beforehand. I just showed up and this is what I'm doing now. Just don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Josh Cochran, AOPA Live. So what a great story of a young guy making it happen. It is. It doesn't hurt to ask, does it? It does not hurt to ask. Good for him. Hey, when we come back, a milestone for Mr. Mustang. And seeing double, AOPA Live this week from Sun and Fun continues in a moment. Purchasing your own aircraft is an exciting experience. AOPA Finance simplifies the process, saving you money with lower interest rates and hassle-free loans, so you get into your new aircraft sooner. AOPA Finance, the right approach to buying an aircraft. Welcome back to AOPA Live at Sun and Fun. Part of the fun, of course, is seeing the Warbirds fly. A crowd favorite, the P-51 Mustang. And one pilot is particularly identified with the Mustang, so much so they call him Mr. Mustang. And this week he's marking a major milestone. Lee Lauterbach is flying his 10,000th hour in the P-51 Mustang in front of the Sun and Fun crowds. AOPA Live's Paul Harrop caught up with him during the celebration. He's the man, the one you go see if you want a PhD in Mustang. This week, he's crossed 10,000 hours in the type, but Lee Lauterbach says it's not about him. It's really a privilege and, and uh, honor to get to fly the airplane this much. And if you think about it, this is, it's about the guys that flew these in combat. Much of Lee's time has been training others in the Mustang, from one-off demo rides to Stallion 51's flagship Mustang checkout course. I uh, hope that we made a difference in the safety record of the high-performance propeller-driven airplanes like the Mustang. And uh, we now have completed 195 graduates of our program. It's a very intense syllabus held to a high standard, but all that training is not without its costs. 10,000 hours, that's hard on these machines. I can't imagine the maintenance that goes into them. Oh gosh, you know, if you look at, you know, the time I've gotten the airplane, it's only because of the maintenance support. And in a humorous way, I've broken the Mustang 10,000 times, but I've got two twin brothers, Peter and Richard Lauterbach, that have fixed it 10,000 in one time. And the Lauterbach sharing in a moment of celebration with the champagne toast at the Mustang Corral on the Sun and Fun flight line, each playing their role in keeping them flying. It's like taking a national treasure out for a flight. Paul Harrop, AOPA Live. Congrats, Lee. If you want to learn more about the Stallion 51, our cameras were there went for their 30th anniversary in 2017. Find some more awesome air-to-air -air with the Mustangs on our YouTube page. Just search Stallion 51. And the AOPA You Can Fly program celebrated a milestone here at Sun and Fun. The 100th new flying club that You Can Fly has helped get started. The boss presented an award commemorating that to the Midway Flying Club out of Midway Regional Airport in Texas. And this club got started at a You Can Fly Rusty Pilot Seminar. So I went to the Rusty Pilot Seminar to get back into flying. And Pat Brown had in that afternoon a flying club seminar, the uh, minimum cost max fun event. We, he put me in touch with a couple of pilots who had thousands of hours, formed together because of Pat Brown, and got the, the resources there, helped us get the club formed and all those type of things. So it was a lot of fun. And we have a whole bunch of resources for flying clubs on our website, including a, a flying club locator if you want to join one, and information on how to start a club of your own. That pilot town meeting was also an opportunity to update pilots on AOPA's push for FBO fee transparency. 
And the good news is that many FBOs are signing on to the Know Before You Go best practices and posting fees online. The freedom from pain from unwanted services is really important to us to represent the pilot community, the user community. But we've engaged in a panel of experts at our FBO operators and making sure that we understand their needs, their abilities, their capacities, and their business models so we can help represent those views and working with NATA as well. Know Before You Go is a campaign and it's a minimum expectation to have, all the, to have this on, on board. So what is our industry doing about it, NATA? So we have, as, as has been mentioned earlier, a white paper come out that uh, encourages the FBO industry to do this, to put their fees online, to get them posted. Many FBOs are now posting fees in AOPA's airport directory online. So real progress on this. It is. It's great to see some of the FBOs stepping up and uh, putting their fees online. We welcome to put them on our airport directory online, and we make it really easy for them. Yes, so just go to the it's, website. It's a really helpful tool for pilots when they do that. Yes. And one of the big draws to Sun and Fun is the air show, and one of the crowd pleasers is the Philip 66 Aerostars aerobatic team. AOPA web editor Jim Moore had a chance to fly along with them on a flight. I'm Jim Moore. I've done four years of IAC competition in the Super Decathlon. I have flown in an extra before, but this is my first time flying an extra in formation. That was pretty incredible. A formation loop, I mean, you're, the airplanes are so close together that your mind cries out that there's something wrong, but these are very professional pilots, and it was a wonderful experience. So flying aerobatics and then flying aerobatics in formation, what a task. They <laughs> Up make in it, the game. They make it look easy. This year marks the 75th anniversary of D-Day. A squadron of C-47s is preparing to go over to Normandy to recreate the event. Among them, the airplane that led the invasion 75 years ago, the commemorative Air Force's That's All Brother. Our cameras took a ride on the historic aircraft. The flight time is going to be about 30 minutes. We'll take off go to the south, 2,500 feet before the formation. By all means, brother. Yeah, I'm sure that's the first time you've heard that today. Could you imagine being an 18-year-old kid, in, well, fresh off the farm, in the full garb and the packs they wore, knowing that you're going to hook up to that and jump out and land under fire? Well, it, it's such an honor to be uh, allowed to, to fly that Saul Brother with the, the history of its being the lead airplane during the D-Day mission and to be one of the few pilots that actually get to get to share this story with everybody in the world. But our mission is to teach history, honor those who, who served and gave us the freedom that we have. We got a, a quick hop in a amazing airplane that is rich in history and it, it was amazing to think about what they must have been going through. You fly a lot of cool stuff. Tell me about this flight. Yeah, the C-47 was uh, pretty awesome to sit back here and uh, see what it would be like. You know, the paratroopers back in World War II, like, what, kind of get the feel of what they were feeling. It was, it was a lot of fun. The D-Day squadron could use your help to pay for the trip to Normandy. Find out how to donate on their website. You can also see several of the airplanes at AOPA's fly into Frederick, Maryland on May 10th and 11th. That's going to be really neat to see them come to our flying. I mean, what a special occasion, our 80th anniversary and getting to have those airplanes there before they head across the ocean. Absolutely, I'm really excited. We're going to have period parachute jumps uh, out of those C-47s and, a, and a, a memorial flight down over DC. It's going to be going to be great. So as we're putting the show together, we got word of the arrival of a unique aircraft, the XP-82 Twin Mustang. We hope to have more on that next week, but that leads us to this. It's got to be the best way to get around sun and fun we've seen yet. We ran into a grandfather who went above and beyond for his grandkids building what has to be the coolest stroller ever. Uh, it's a F-82 twin Mustang. 
Uh, they were built back in 45, and uh, they were primarily escorts for the, uh, the bombers. My son has uh, two grandsons. He asked if I would take a peaton pole that I had built for them, a uh, pedal plane, and cut it the tail off and make a uh, uh, air camper out of it, a two-holer. And I could, but I decided that this was more practical and something different. And so uh, uh, it's motorized. The uh, tiller that's uh, connected to the tail, when you pull that back, it brings the airplane up to level flight. It has nav lights, it has flaps, okay? The paint scheme is Air National Guard uh, uh, paint scheme in, uh, for Alaska. The boys have a lot of fun with it. They love it. Matter of fact, when uh, we get ready to come out on the field, uh, they can't wait to get in it. And uh, they, they've got the air show wave down and everything, you know, so. And the thumbs up, you know. They love it. They love the attention. What a cool creative grandfather. It is. I was here when he brought it by. It's got it's got working nav lights and <laughs> propellers that, that 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 spin. So yeah, uh, that is luck very, out in the grandfather lottery. Very clever. <laughs> Good on him. And that's it for this year from Sun and Fun. Thanks so much for watching. As always, we like to hear from you. Our email is AOPA Live at AOPA.org. And we hope to see you next Thursday for another edition of AOPA Live All this right. week.